Good morning. Welcome to the Bridge Church Smithfield. Are you excited to be here? All right, we also want to welcome our online audience. You know what you need to do? You need to thank yourselves this morning. You need to thank yourselves for rolling out of the bed, rolling to the recliner if you're watching church online this morning. But thank yourselves mostly for carving out the time to worship our Lord. We're so excited that you're here today. And as you're standing, I just want to read a word of scripture. Isaiah 55, verses 10 through 12 says, As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Here's the fun part. It says, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. You know what I love about this verse is that it talks about rain, and it compares rain to the Word of God. What's funny is when we get into the house of the Lord and we hear the Word, when we sing the Word together, when we join together in community and worship the Lord, that word kind of sprinkles down. And you know what happens to trees? What do they do? They grow. How many of you have been in the woods when it starts raining? It's a beautiful sound. That's what our worship is. When we can respond to his word and when we can make much of the name of Jesus, he brings us joy. Can we celebrate joy this morning? Let's lift up our voices.
much in the name of Jesus this morning. How 
never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. Come on, sing. You are Gyro, you are enough. Gyro, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. You are a I don't want to forget how I feel right now on the mountaintop. I can see so clearly what it's all about. So stay by my side when the sun goes down. Don't want to forget how I feel.
Give God a big hand clap of praise all over the house. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. Amen. So good to see you guys today. So good to have you in the house. Come on. Give it up for the team today. Didn't they do an amazing job? My man, Big John, is in the house with us today. Always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Certainly no stranger to the house. He's been with us. Slim back here in the back doing such an amazing job. We appreciate you. Got my buddy Kyler in there in the drums. So, I mean, you know, it takes a village, man. It takes a village to pull it all together. These guys do an amazing job. So good to see you today, man. Good to have you in the house today. Man, thank you for being here. Um, i tell you what I want to do real quick. I want to just pause just for a second and just really just kind of bombard heaven just for a moment. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because so many families... Uh, right here, right beside you, right around you are, are really struggling. They're going through different things in their hearts and in their lives. And so we just want to take an opportunity as a family to pray for one another. Uh, we're starting a new series today called Pray Like This. And so I think it's fitting that we open up our service with the scriptures. We, we take time to pray one for another. And so uh, it's going to be an amazing series. But so let's just pray. Just pray for one another. If you feel comfortable, uh, maybe placing your hand up high on someone's shoulder, you could certainly do that uh, at this time if you feel comfortable with that. Let's just pray for one another. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for somebody around you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for moments like this. Father, we thank you for those that are tuned in online right now. And Lord, for the requests and the needs that they have in their hearts and in their lives. And so, Father, we lift them up to you as well. God, we pray for one another in the house. So many people going through uh, difficulties, circumstances. So many things that seem to be bombarding the family. It's no coincidence that, Father, we've come out of a series talking about arrows, talking about our family, our children, and 
now we're going into a series to to bathe all of that in prayer. And so, Lord, in the middle of all that, there seems to be an, a tick up in the attack of the enemy. But, Father, we come against that right now in the name of Jesus. We just pray one for another right now. You know the hearts, you know the souls, you know what people are dealing with, you know what they're going through. And so, Father, we put it at your feet right now. And we ask for healing, we ask for restoration in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Everybody said amen. amen. Come on, give God another big hand clap of praise all over the house. Well, guys, you know what we do, right? We always have what we call our meet and greet time. And so here's what we ask you to do. We ask you to just kind of reach across the aisle, reach across the the worship auditorium, if you will. High five someone you do not know and just let them know it's glad to be in the house today. Come on, guys, meet and greet. Turn to somebody and give them a, a big high five one more time around your area. Give them a high five. Say thank you for being here today. Turn to somebody and say, I'm glad you're in church today. Turn to your second choice and say, you need a little church, my friend. Amen. Make sure you put my friend in there. Hey, guys, so good to see you today. Hey, turn your attention to the TVs right now, and let's get started in our series. Where do you go when you talk with God? What do you say? I pray in the daily rhythms of life. But to focus, I sometimes come out here to hear more clearly. This is where I pray through the Bible. And it's in the scriptures that the Holy Spirit speaks clearly to me. When do prayers come easy to you? Why is it so difficult at other times? How should we talk to God? What kind of prayers does God love to answer? What lessons can we learn from prayers recorded in the Bible? Every question has an answer in the Word of God. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, somebody. Two of you. (laughs) How's everybody doing today, man? Everybody doing good? Everybody doing good? Hanging in there? Life is great. God's blessing you. You're having a great day so far. Beautiful day outside today. Um, Hey, guys, before we jump into it, let me just give you a couple things to throw out there to you to kind of be aware of some things we've got coming up around here. Uh, What's next Sunday? What's next Sunday? Softball day. Come on. Is anybody ready for softball day? Four of you. Amen. That's so awesome. So next Sunday, guys, next Sunday is softball day. We actually have three softball teams here at the bridge uh, that that are doing an amazing job. They play every week right across the street here 
uh, at the uh, at the fields over there. And so, man, we're just we just felt like it was a great time to just bring the teams together and bring the players together, those that can come, and and really just celebrate this as a ministry because that's what it is. It's not just a sport. It's not just kind of just hanging out. It, this is a ministry. These guys come together. They pray with one another. They pray before. They pray during. They pray afterwards. And so I think it's just a great opportunity for ministry to happen. And so next week when you come in, we're going to have three of our coaches. They're going to be giving kind of a short testimony, if you will, just kind of why they do what they do. A lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of their own resources, I should say, that are invested in these teams. And so we want to hear their hearts. And so they're going to speak a little bit. I'm going to preach a little bit. But after all of that said and done, we have some hot dogs. Come on, anybody like hot dogs? Bright leaf hot dogs. Come on, good old red hot dog. We do have brown hot dogs for the Duke fans in the house. Amen, we got some for you too. So, we got red hot dogs, we got brown hot dogs, we've got chips, we've got drinks, we've got all of that stuff. But on top of all of that, we have kickball tournaments going on for the adults and for the kids. Uh, there's all kinds of games happening. There is a dunking booth, I'm being told, that's going to be on site. Anybody want to get into dunking booth? Come on. One person. Amen. So, <laughs> uh, that's going to be here. Inflatables are going to be here. So, a lot of things happening next Sunday. Now, the important thing for you to understand about next Sunday is we go to a new service time. Okay? We start at 10 o'clock not 1030. Okay, so please keep that in mind as you're coming out next week. You show up at 1030 and you're like, man, was everybody already here? But it's we already started. Amen. So it's at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, not 1030. So that's coming up. Uh, that's happening next week. And then June's right around the corner. Come on. I mean, you know that June's around the corner. A lot of things happening in June. The other thing I would mention to you is today, right after service, right after service, you have an opportunity as you walk out, as you go out into this area right here, there's going to be different tables set up, there's balloons set up, because uh, today is one of the days that we want to highlight the different bridge groups that we have that are kicking off during the summertime. And I know some of you are like, well, man, I travel a lot during summer. Look, so we get all of that. But we still want to offer some groups for many of you that want to be a part of one. And I want you to be a part of a group. And so, you know, I'm talking, I'll be teaching a group uh, right here on Sunday evenings. So I'll have a table out there as well. Stop by and see me. Several of the people will be out there with tables and information about what their groups look like, when they start, all of that good stuff. So I want you to stop by the tables. Turn to somebody and say, stop by the tables. Amen. Before you leave. Come on, make sure you sign up. Like three of you said that. I, I, I feel you. But anyway, so make sure you do that. So anyway, that's coming up. Guys, man, how many of you know we're in, the, we're in a capital campaign called Building for the Generations? And if many of you that were here last year, you may remember, we said, hey, man, here's some of the things we're going to do. And so we laid out this year of what this year was going to look like and kind of where we were headed. And so if you remember, I said the first quarter, what were we going to do? We were going to put new flooring in, nursery, foyer. Come on, how many of you know somebody say check? Amen. Amen. That's done. That's first quarter. How many of you know what quarter are we in now? Second quarter, for those you had to count. So we're in the second quarter. And I said, the second quarter, we're going to have what? New lights. Just look up. Just look up right there at what you got right now. Come on, somebody. How awesome is that? So, so awesome. I am praying online is looking a whole lot better right now. Hey, man, how do I look? Do I look good up here today? Whatever, man. Anyway. <laughs> So we did some lights, and hey, man, we want to give a big-time shout-out to uh, Brooks and Reed. They did all of the lighting for us, and man, when you buy lights from them guys, they come with a drummer, amen? <laughs> How awesome is that? So they, their staff is here today, and they're training back there in the back with our lights and trying to get the timing and everything right, and, and one of the guys, uh, which is actually one of the owners, um, he was like... Uh, Hey, man, uh, he plays drums really good. And we were like, we just kind of need you today. Amen? Like, we just bought that. So get over there. So anyway, he did a great job. Amen? So, yeah, man, so second quarter, the lights are installed. Yes! So third quarter is right around the corner. Third quarter, here's what we're doing. We're getting the new plans and everything laid out for the fourth quarter expansion. Come on, somebody. Yes! 
If that doesn't excite you, i got nothing left. So anyway, so I just want to give you an update on where we are, what's happening, what's going on. Uh, because many of you are so faithful, so faithful. And I wanted to say thank you for that. You've been so faithful in your giving for the Building for the Generation Fund. And so thank you for that. And so I, I like to keep you on track. I like to let you know what's happening, what's going on. And so the lights are installed. That's happening. And so once we move into the third quarter, uh, sometime in the third quarter, Lord willing, because <laughs> a lot of people are backed up right now, I'll be able to stand up here with a big old set of plans and say, we got the plans. And then the fourth quarter... Uh, hopefully, prayerfully, you'll see some equipment back there. Come on, knocking out walls in Jesus' name. So anyway, so all of that stuff is happening. So anyway, let's get into the Word today, guys. Hey, we're starting a brand new series today called Pray Like This. Pray Like This. And don't want to belabor the point. I just want to kind of jump right in. Are you okay with that? Let me just jump right in, right to start with. Let me ask you something. If you had a face-to-face moment with God, You and God, face to face, I'll give you 15 minutes. If you get face to face time with God, you're sitting here, he's sitting there, and you got one on one time for 15 minutes, here's a question for you What would you talk about? What would you talk about? What would be the the echo of your heart? What would you ask for? Would you ask for anything? Would you pray? Would you would you thank him? Would you ask God to to help your family, help your spouse, help your kids? Would you ask God to continue to move around the world? A lot of people in the world hurting right now. What would you ask for that? Would you really just kind of ask for like upgrade looks? Say, man, I, I don't know. Like, Lord, I need it now in Jesus' name. Would you ask for hair? I don't know. What would you ask for? And here's the funny thing. I ran across some prayers that kids said they would ask God. And here's here's what some of them said. Uh, One of them said, here's what I would say. Dear God, please take care of my dad, my mom, my sister, my brother, my doggy, and me. And God, please take care of yourself. Because if anything happens to you, like we're going to be in a big mess. Amen. (laughs) Here's another one. God, when my mom makes leftovers, do I have to pray for the food again? I mean, you know, that's actually a really good one right there. God's already sanctified it. He's already, do we really, I don't know. That's just run through my mind. Here's another one. Dear God, I went to this wedding and they were kissing right there in the church. Is that okay? I mean, like they just wanting to know. Here's another one. Dear God, I love Christmas and Easter, but could you please put another holiday in the middle? Because there's nothing really good there now. You know what this joke is asking for? More stuff. Amen. Just just more stuff. Here's another one. Dear God, my mom tells me that you have a reason for everything on earth. I guess broccoli is one of your mysteries. Amen. That's pretty good. Here's another one. Dear God, I need you to make my mom not allergic to cats because I really want a cat and I don't want to ask my mom to move out. (laughs) My brother got priorities. Here's another one. Last one for you. Dear God, my dog is in heaven with you, so please take care of him. Sorry if he chews your sandals. <laughs> what would you ask God? 15 minutes, face to face, you and him. What would you ask him? What would you pray about? Would you worship? Would you pray? Would you ask? If, if, if you're, what, what, when you think about your ask, would it be for you or would it be for the world? What, what would you do in that moment? Well, the disciples actually had an opportunity to do that. And in this opportunity, I want us to turn to the book of Luke. How many of you got your Bibles with you today? Come on, wave them at me. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Wave them at me. The book of Luke. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. The disciples having this one-on-one time with Jesus. Luke is actually a very interesting uh, writer. Uh, He's actually a doctor, a physician. You say, well, where do you find that at? Colossians chapter 4, verse 14 talks about that. You might want to write that down. The other interesting thing about Luke is he's actually the only Gentile writer in the New Testament. He's the only one. He also wrote the book of Acts, which is actually a sequel to the book of Luke, which is what he's writing now. So, just kind of give you a little background. I don't know if it's worth anything. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. Jesus is teaching his disciples about prayer. And it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. Now, now over and over and over in the Gospels, when you start reading you're going to find that this was, this was normal for Jesus. He was, he was always going off. He was always praying. He was always in communication with the Father. 
And so he's praying in a certain place. It says, when he had finished, one of the disciples asked him or said to him, Lord, teach us how to... Lord, teach us how to... One more time. Lord, teach us how to pray just like John taught his disciples. Father, thank you so much for your word today. May it penetrate our hearts. May it help us to understand and know you better in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. I find it very interesting that the disciples who had been with Jesus for some time now, uh, think about what they saw. Think about what they had heard. They had heard some of the greatest messages ever preached in the world. They had seen miracles on top of miracles. I'm talking blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, the lame walking, the dead being raised. They, they, they had seen all this. They had experienced all this. But in this intimate moment, they didn't ask Jesus to teach them how to preach. They didn't ask Jesus to teach them how to do miracles. In this moment, they asked him to teach them how to pray. Why? Because they recognized a powerful key to the life and ministry of Jesus. And that was that he stayed in constant conversational contact with God. They realized that prayer was the root behind the fruit, if you will. That was their lifeline. It was their way of communicating. It was the root behind the fruit. I love what Martin Luther, the great Protestant reformer, he once said this. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Come on, let me read that to you again, because I don't think you got that real good. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. So what is prayer? It's almost like a lifeline, if you will, to God. That's what it is. And yet a recent survey showed that only 17% of Christians said they prayed weekly. Only 5% of Christians said they prayed monthly. 10% of Christians said they just don't pray at all. And I begin to think about it. Wait a minute. Like if this is a lifeline to Christ, this my prayer life, why is it that people aren't praying? And I believe there's several reasons to that. And so I want to give you kind of four reasons why I believe people don't pray. Because there's a lot of misconception, a lot of confusion as it relates to prayer. And so if you're taking notes, I I want you to write some things down. Why people don't pray. Again, this is just my opinion. Here's the first one. Number one, just not sure how to pray. People are not sure how to pray. I mean, think about it. I mean, do do I pray like this? Do I pray this way? Do I pray standing up? Do I pray kneeling? Do I pray too long? Do I pray not long enough? Do I pray too loud? Do I not pray long enough? I mean, loud enough? I mean, am, am I doing this the right way? And so there's all this confusion that we let come in. And we just say, you know what? Why do I even need to pray? I'm not going to pray. Here's the second reason why I think people don't pray is because they get distracted while praying. Anybody, ADHD, A to Z, come on somebody, wave at me. Get distracted. And, and listen, I, I, I'm with you on this one because I can go upstairs, I can get in my closet, my prayer closet if you will, and I can start praying. And man, I've got like prayer momentum. Come on somebody. Like I can feel it. I'm entering into the throne of God. Everything is great. And all of a sudden, a missile out of nowhere hits my brain. And I'm like, we need toilet paper. We need butter. What are the kids going to eat? I've got to carry them here. I've got to do it. Does anybody ever feel that when you're in your prayer time? And so a lot of times you're praying and you've got all of this stuff. And before you realize it, you're in a total different direction in another conversation. And then you just give up and walk away. Here's the third reason why I believe people don't pray is because they feel like their requests are too small for God. The requests are too small for God. I mean, God is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's ever-present. Why would he be concerned about what I've got? He's busy running the world. He's busy with the big stuff. Why would he be concerned with what I've got in my life, what I've got going on in my world? And so we don't take our requests to God because we feel like they're too small. Here's the fourth reason. We're not sure our prayers will make a difference. This is a big one. I mean, pastor, let's get real. I prayed one time before and it didn't work. I mean, I asked God for this and I really felt like that that it was a genuine prayer. I asked God for this. I asked God for that. I was praying for this and praying for that. And, 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 but it didn't work. So, so I don't feel like I need to try it anymore because obviously he doesn't want to hear from me. 
And the result, sadly, is that so many people live their lives believing in God, but having this half-hearted or sometimes non-existent prayer life. And so today, I just want to kind of lay a foundation for you, and I want to make it very simple for you. Today, I want to give you the why behind the prayer. Like, why do we pray? What's the purpose of prayer? What's the role of prayer? And, and, and there's a lot of places we can go in the Bible to kind of explain this. But I really just want to focus on three chapters in the book of John. Three chapters in the book of John. John chapter 14 through John chapter 16. And, and, and here it is. Jesus, he's, he's speaking to the disciples. Kind of his last words, if you will. And he's making the point clearly. Guys, I'm going to the cross. Like, I'm going to die for the sins of the world. Don't feel bad about that. Three days later, I'm coming back to life. I'm going to the Father, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. But while I'm gone, I'm not going to leave you here by yourself. I'm going to send a comforter called the Holy Spirit. And He's going to live inside of you, and He's going to dwell within you. And the result is, we'll be able to communicate just like I was there with you in the flesh. And in these three powerful chapters, I believe Jesus lays out for us four purposes or four roles of prayer. And so if you're writing some things down, write this down. Here's number one. Why do I pray? What's the purpose of it? Number one, prayer is connecting to God. That's what it is. It's connecting to God. It's expressing our commitment and our dependence upon God. It's saying, God, I need you. Like, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all this worked out. Uh, you know, I, I can't do this life on my own. Like, I need you. And you understand this is hard for so many people. Because we have an illusion that we're in control of everything. Like, I want to be in control of this. I can handle this. I can handle that. And as a result, there's a mentality that just says, God, if I need you, I'll call on you. But I've got this. But you understand that effective prayer requires you admitting inadequacy. It requires you admitting that, God, I don't have it all together. And, God, I don't know what I'm doing right now. And I need you. And so that's what prayer is. It's saying, God, I'm dependent on you. And I'm connected on you because you are my lifeline. In you I move, in you I live, in you I have my being, Acts chapter 17, 28 says. And so, Lord, I've got to stay connected to you. And in John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus kind of gives us this great illustration of what it means to be connected. John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And so this illustration is that you've got this branch and you've got this vine or this tree, if you will. There's a branch and there's a tree. And as long as the branch is connected to the tree, what happens? There's life flowing in the branch. There's fruit coming on the branch. So understand the meaning of prayer is when you're connected with God, your life will bear fruit. But it has nothing to do with what you're doing. It has to do with who you're connected to. Because that's what prayer is. It's being connected with God. How many of you ever seen the Discovery Channel before? And, and you see all of that happening. And you see the guy diving like hundreds and hundreds of feet down into the ocean. He's got this big tank on his head. And he's got an airline connected to the boat. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Imagine if a swordfish would just come by and cut my brother's airline. How long do you think he would last down there with no air? He wouldn't last at all. And so again, this is a huge part of what I'm talking about. This is what prayer is. It is a lifeline to God. And that's why it's important that we connect to God. It's connecting with God. Here's the second thing that prayer is, why we pray. Prayer is communicating with God. It's communicating with God. And really, this is it's kind of a definition of prayer. It's a definition of prayer because this is what prayer is. It's communicating with God. And I know it sounds so simple, and yet it's still so hard to believe that we have access to the God of heaven and earth. That we have access to the throne room. The Bible says in Hebrews 4.16, we can come boldly before his throne that we might find help in our time of need. And I know sometimes that's hard to imagine that we have access to this almighty God. But we do, and that's what he's talking about. It's that simple. It's communicating with God. And I think all of us can agree that most of the problems in our lives revolve around communication. Most of the problems in your life and in my life revolves around communication. Come on. 
Does anybody understand women, men? Amen. My wife can sit there at the sink and she's washing dishes and she looks at me. In that moment, I'm expected to know what she wants me to do. And if I don't do it, come on, men, have you ever been here before? I get a beat down. It's communicating. I'm like, girl, like make it plain. Bring out the flannel graph. Do what you got to do. Like make it simple for me. It's communication. That's where most of our problems in life revolve around. Communication. Communication with our spouse. Communication with our kids. Communication with our coworkers. And so we have to work so hard on communication. Why? Because the minute communication breaks down, the relationship always suffers. The relationship always suffers. And so communication is critical to the relationships. And this is what so many of us miss. Because this is what prayer is. It's communicating with a personal God. You say, well, how personal is he? Let's look at what Jesus says. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 15. He says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I called you friends. One more time. I've called you friends. How many of you remember the song, I am a friend of God? That's kind of where it revolved around. I call you friends for everything that I've learned from my father, I've made known to you. And so it's almost like the reason why we can talk to God is because he calls us friends. I want you to let that sink in for a moment. What a privilege that is that we've been invited to talk to the creator of the universe. We've been invited to talk to a God that knows the number of hairs on your head. You've been invited to talk to a God that he says, every tear you've ever cried, I keep it in a bottle and I keep up with it. Every hurt, you know what that means? Every hurt you've ever abstained in your life, God says, I've got a record of that. And I'm holding on to that. So this is the creator. And so Jesus is essentially saying, yes, I am the king of kings and lord of lords. Yes, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. But you're my friends. And I want you to talk with me. And so if you're in here today and you find prayer difficult, maybe you're watching online and maybe you look at prayer as more of like an obligation, just something I feel like I've got to do, then maybe it hasn't hit you just how much God loves you. Because God says, I'm willing to call you a friend. And friendships can't grow without communication. Come on, are you with me today? That's two of them. Friends, what is prayer? It's connecting with God. Prayer is communicating with God. Again, guys, just foundation today. Here's the third thing. Prayer is calling on God. That's what prayer is. Ask, call upon. And that's what God's talking about. Make your needs, make your requests known to Him. John actually repeats Jesus saying this over and over and over in these three chapters. John chapter 16, verse 24. Until now, you've not asked for anything in my name. This is Jesus talking. What did he say? Ask. Ask. Call upon. And you will receive and your joy will be complete. God says, hey, I want you to ask me for something. I want you to call upon me. I want you to talk with me. Mark Batterson said this. The greatest tragedy in life is the prayers that go unanswered because they go unasked. The greatest tragedy in life are the prayers that go unanswered because they go unasked. And so over and over, again, John chapter 14, verse 14, what does Jesus say? You may ask me, call upon me for anything in my name and I will do it. And I know that's a sandpaper scripture right there because I know the pushback that's going to come from that. To say, well, pastor, no, that's not true. I mean, I prayed and God didn't do anything. I prayed and God didn't move. And, and maybe the explanation, maybe the explanation could be found in the preceding verse in John 14, 13. He says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You know what he's saying there? He's saying God will do it if it accomplishes his purpose on the earth. Let me ask you something. If God was to answer every one of the prayers that you've prayed for the past month, let's just be real right now, just me and you. If God was to answer every prayer you prayed in the past month, would the world benefit or would you benefit? James 4, 3. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with what? Wrong motives. Lord, give me a bunch of money in my bank account. Why? 
so you can go buy a new pair of shoes. God, give me a brand new house. What's wrong with the house you got? God, give me a brand new car. What's wrong with the car you got? Nothing wrong with the house. Nothing wrong with the car. Nothing wrong. With... But what are your motives behind the prayer request? He says, you're, when you ask, you don't receive because you're asking with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Which is why I ask you, if God answered all your prayers right now, would you benefit or would the world benefit? Which one? Look at what the psalmist says. Psalmist 37, chapter 37, verse 4. This is my wife's favorite scripture, by the way. Point for Alan, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You got to get them where you can. Holla. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you what? The desires of your heart. When our desire lines up with God's desire, answered prayers happen, and it may not be in your timing. And it may not be the, the way you want it to be. But when our desire lines up with God's desire, answered prayer happens. So what about this? What if I went before God and said, God, I don't want to look at prayer as a duty anymore. I don't want to look at it as an obligation. I want to desire prayer. How many of you know that prayer lines up with His will? And that prayer is a prayer that God will answer. So again, over and over and over again in these three chapters, what do we hear? We hear Jesus saying, ask, 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 seek, knock. And in fact, the Bible says there's some of the things you're not even going to get unless you're willing to ask for it. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what are you lacking because you haven't asked for it? I'm not talking about the material stuff. You, I think you know my heart here. What are you lacking because you haven't asked for it? There, there used to be an old saying and, and, and I used to actually hear my grandmother say this. It's an old saying that said, pray for it before you pay for it. Pray for it before you pay for it. Come on, how many of you remember when you didn't have any money in your bank account? Where you just couldn't run to the store and buy Double pound of cheeseburgers, amen, at $10. What is up with that inflation? But anyway, you couldn't, you couldn't just do that. Pray for it before you pay for it. We have become so prosperous in this world, and especially in America, to where every need that comes up, what do we do? Got the money, we pay for it. And if we can't pay for it, what do we do? We pull out that little devil called a credit card, amen, and we just max it out. And it never dawns on us to say, wait a minute. Maybe I need to take time praying for this before I pay for this. So many times we miss out on God's blessings because we want to control it. We want to do it on our own instead of asking God. What is prayer? It's connecting to God. It's communicating with God. It's calling on God. Here's the fourth one. Prayer is cooperating with God. It's cooperating with God. And in many ways, this is the most exciting part of prayer. Because you understand that God chose to set up a system whereby we get to be partners with Him and what He's doing in the earth. He chose to set up that system. And this is a huge part of what prayer is. Listen to me. Lean into what I'm about to say. It's God saying, I'm going to limit what I do by what you're willing to pray. Can you imagine that? I'm going to limit what I do by what you're willing to pray and what you're willing to believe me for. And so God says, I'm going to give you the privilege of teaming up with me. One of the most amazing verses in all of the Bible, and so many people just don't understand it, but it's John chapter 14, verse 12. John chapter 14, verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do what? Even greater things than these. Because I'm going to the Father. And I read that scripture and I'm like, wait, time out. Wait a minute. Can you imagine doing more than Jesus did? Can you imagine? Like, how is that possible? And what does that mean? Jesus says, here's how. Prayer. Faith. Believing in me. And because of that, you'll do greater things. Why? It goes back to John 14, 13. We read that earlier. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Why would Jesus offer us that kind of prayer? To bring glory to God. So how can we possibly do that? One word. Prayer. Prayer. Why? Because prayer is not limited by time or space. You didn't hear what I just said. Prayer is not limited by time 
or space. Jesus, while he was on the earth, he voluntarily limited himself to time and space. But when he went to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to come live inside of us. And now the Holy Spirit empowers us. It searches our hearts. It knows our motives. The Holy Spirit takes your prayer directly to the throne room of God, to Jesus, who is our intercessor. Where's that at? I'm glad you asked me. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is what? Able to save completely those who come to God through him. Because he always lives to what? Intercede for them. Do you understand how amazing it is that when you pray, the Holy Spirit takes that prayer to the throne room and Jesus whispers to the Father, I know what they're going through. I went through that. And do you understand the amazing opportunity we have? Let me put it to you like this. Imagine you got up this morning and you went into your prayer closet. And you stayed there for some time. And you come out of the prayer closet. You come downstairs, wherever you are. And your family asks you, hey, where have you been? What have you been doing? Man, I've been visiting Africa. I've been praying for the kids in the Sudan that don't have clean water and don't have clean food. I've been praying for our brothers and sisters in China who can't come into a church and worship freely because they'll be killed. I've been praying for sister so-and-so. I've been praying for Valerie. I've been praying for Pam. I've been praying for this. I've been praying for that. And do you understand what's happening in that moment that your prayers are literally penetrating all of those places at one time? Because you're praying. You're praying. You're praying. Every week we get, we get a list of, of prayer requests. And incidentally, if this is your first time here today, there's, a, there's a, a card in the back of your seat right there. I want you to fill that card out. And at the end of the service, you can take it to the VIP banner. We've got a gift for you. Thank you for being here. But here's why... why Can I help you a little bit today? Let me me help you. Let me just reveal my heart to you. Why do you think every week I get up here and I ask you, hey guys, if you got a prayer request, what do I tell you to do? Put it on the card. Why? Because every week I get those cards. And every week I send them to our prayer warriors. And every week I take those cards up to the prayer room and I lay them out on the floor and I literally lay on the floor. And not only me, but our prayer warriors, they're kind of doing their own thing their own way. But we are bombarding heaven on your behalf. We're bombarding heaven on your behalf. Why? Because prayer has no bounds. It's not limited to space. I don't have to be where you are. But my spirit is connecting with your spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit. How can I do more? Because we're able to pray. And I don't have to be where you are. But my prayers are where you are. And God's interceding for you. Because I'm willing to pray for you. It has no. It's not limited by space. It's not limited by time. You understand some of the prayers Jesus prayed 2,000 years ago. Are coming true today. Some of the prayers that many of you have been praying for 10 years, 20 years, 25 years are coming true today. Pastor, you don't understand my situation. You don't understand where I'm at. Can I get you to do something for me? Come on, guys. Just me and you right here. Me and you watching online. Can I get you to make a commitment? Like really make a commitment. We've got four more weeks left in this series. We're going to have a great time. Today is just foundational stuff. Can I get you to commit for the next four weeks to pray 10 minutes a day? It's 10 minutes. I'm not asking for an hour. I'm not asking for like eight hours. I'm, I'm just, it's just 10 minutes. Could, could you get up about 10 minutes earlier? Could you bombard heaven on somebody's behalf for 10 minutes? could be your family it could be someone you know 
a co-worker, it, it could be anyone, but you're willing to bombard heaven on that person's behalf. It could be that once you start praying, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, will start bringing things to your memory. And maybe even the next thing you know, I'm praying the other day, and all of a sudden, there's a young lady who popped into my mind who I haven't seen since I was in Ecuador. And God reminded me to say, hey, pray for that young I don't know her. I don't know where she's at. But in that moment, I didn't even know her name but I saw her face clear as day and I said, God, you know the need. And I'm praying on her behalf right now. That's the power of prayer when you're willing to come into that place. And listen, when you take the prayer request, when you take this stuff, and imagine if 50 people were praying over that one request. It would almost be like 50,000 missiles attacking the enemy at one time. We've committed ourselves to building for the generations. You guys heard me talking about that at the first of the service. It's going to take an act of God to do everything we want to do. The fact that we've been able to do in two quarters the the thing that we said we were going to do is an absolute miracle. It's an absolute miracle. Can I tell you why? These lights right here, they weren't even supposed to be here. So sometime the end of June, I think. Is that right, Kyler? Just sometime the end of June. He calls me up and he's like, Pastor, man, I'm so sorry. They're not even going to be here to the end of June. And then we've got to schedule it. And then we've got to install it. And I'm like, oh, man, that's no problem. We, like, let's just trust God with it. And a couple of days later, or maybe a week later, he called me back and said, you ain't going to believe it. They're here. Mm. So yeah, it don't excite you, but it excites me pretty good. There's no way we can do what God wants us to do. Without your praying. And I need you. This church needs you. I want you to look around right now. Just, just take a moment. Just look around. I say, man, I don't know them people. I don't care. Just look around. I want you to get a face in your mind. Because when you're praying over the next several weeks, I'm believing that God's going to bring a face to your mind. And you're going to be praying for that person. What is prayer is connecting with God, communicating with God, calling upon God, cooperating. That's what prayer is. Stand with me all over the house. Miss Jana, do me a favor. Put Martin Luther's quote back up there, if you could. I want that to sink in. I want that to sink into your hearts right now. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Come on, let's go back to the beginning. You got 15 minutes. It's you and God. What would you pray about? What would you ask Him for? Would you ask Him for anything or would you just simply fall down and worship? What does that look like for you? Because can, can I be honest with you? The Bible says when we accept Christ into our heart, the Holy Spirit comes and takes up residence in us. Can, can I help you with something? You got 15 minutes with Him every day. You got 24 hours with Him every day. You've got Him with you every single day. So why are you waiting for the one-on-one when He's already there? Go ahead and have the conversation with Him. What does that conversation look like? I don't know. That's between you and him. But I'm praying you'll commit over the next four weeks to spend 10 minutes a day in prayer. And I'll make a guarantee to you. I'm not saying your life's going to get easier. I'm not saying that everything is going to go like groovy for you. But what I am saying is you'll never be the same again. You'll never be the same again. So bow your heads with me all over the house. Father, thank you for moments like this. Thank you for the opportunity to to gather in your house. Thank you, Lord, for for giving us uh, such a simple message. It, it, It is really simple. But it is so very true that we need to spend our time in prayer with you. We need to connect with you, God. We need to communicate with you. We need to call upon you. We need to cooperate with you in everything we do. 
And so now, Lord, you know the needs in the house. You know the needs that are those that are watching online. And so, Father, we pray for them. We pray for one another. And we lift one another up to you. In Jesus' name. Look at me real quick. Look at me real quick. You guys know. You know me. <clears throat> you know we can't start a series like this without giving you an opportunity to come down and pray. And so here's what I'd love to do. If you're busy, if you got to go, I understand it. There's no pressure here. But I want to give you an opportunity to just start your time off right now. If you want to stay 10 minutes, that's entirely up to you. That's up to you. But I do want you to come. So if you will, just come where you are right now. Step out of where you are. Let's come to the altar and let's just pray. Let's just seek God. Let's start this series off with a heart of prayer. Just say, God, I need you. And God, I'm longing for you. God, I need you in my life. I need you in my heart. Father, help me. Father, help me. Lord, I've got a situation. I've got a, a need in my family. I've got a need in my marriage. I've got a need in the life of my kids. God, I need you. Why? Because effective prayer is admitting inadequacy. I need you, Lord. I need you in my heart. I need you in my life. I need you in my world. I don't want to dare do anything without you. So, God, I need you. In this moment, in this hour, I need you. Father, right now, we're bombarding heaven. There's so many prayer requests that are going up to you right now. All over this building, all on, online, right now, prayer requests going up to you. And so, God, we just give you praise for that. And Lord, we open our hearts to you. We pray. We call out to you, God. Help us to hear from you. In Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed. Maybe you're in the house today. Maybe you're online. Man, you come into the service today and God's just been dealing with your heart. Maybe you've never taken that first step of accepting Him as Lord and Savior in your heart and in your life. And you say, Father, now's the time. I want to I want to do that now. God's not letting you go. God set you up. He brought you here to have an encounter with you. And if that's you in the house today and you mean business with God, God means business with you. I'm wondering, can you be honest right now, wherever you are in this building, and say, that's me, Pastor. Could you slip up a hand and say, I need him. I need him in my heart. I need him in my life. Seize the hand. Seize the hand. Seize the hand. This is such a serious moment, but guys, I can't hardly see you. I've got to put my hand up, these new lights. Do me a favor if you raise your hand. God means business with you. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, we pray it as a family. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And Father, I believe you died on the cross and rose the third day. And so now, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sins. Lord, use me for your glory. Help me to pray effective prayers. Help me to bombard heaven on someone else's behalf. And God, help me to live out this thing called life. Serving you. Relying on you. Staying connected to you. Staying in communication with you. Staying committed to you. Staying to a place where I'm calling upon you, God, every single day of my life. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. Can we give these guys a big round of applause? Make an amazing step today. Do me a favor all over the house. If you mean business with God, He means business with you. If you mean business with God, He means business with you. Do me a favor. If you prayed that prayer, take a card right now in your hand. Check that box. Put your name and number down. Why? I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to get your information out to the prayer team. We want to pray with you. We want to help you. We want to connect with you. There's some bridge groups that are going to be available for you right outside those doors. I want to get you connected, and I want to help you today. Amen? Come on. Give God a big round of applause all over the house. Amen? Man, guys, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, you realize we didn't take up an offering today? That's on purpose. So what we ask you to do, man, if God's touching your heart and speaking into your heart, there's two high top tables right inside the doors right here on your way out. If God should speak to you, drop something in those baskets. If not, then you can certainly give online. Guys, I love you. I praise God for you. Have a great week. I'll see you Sunday.